So in 89, I worked on the Valdi or the Exxon oil spill. I was out in Valdez and all, you know, all oh, the wow. places. Right. And so I was just a kid. I was 19. And what happened is that thousands of you know civilians, there were some contractors too, but there were, you know, professionals, but lots of just non-professionals like myself were instead of fishing, the fishing boat captains and crews were commissioned to basically house all the workers. So we lived on fishing boats that year instead of, so instead of fishing, we were just going around and I'd never been in that part of the, the country, but long story short, it doesn't really matter. The point, the point is I worked with this one guy and we'll just call him Bill. So I'm 19, Bill's probably 32, 33, about my height. Uh, he weighed probably, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna say about 160 pounds. So he's like average height, weighed about 160 pounds, skinny, pot belly, like he's, you know, he, he was definitely not a specimen and we would be working out on the beaches and we would be uh, carrying bags of, um, you know, contaminated seaweed and rocks and whatnot. And the bags were up to 80 pounds and he would have to put, like dump out some of the bag. He, he would never carry more than about 40 pounds. Sweat be pouring down. He works really slowly, chain smoking. He's always smoking. Whenever we'd have time off, he'd drink like the weekend away, that kind of thing. So this guy is, you know, I could carry, I mean, I literally had had to carry him a couple of times because he got so tired, but there was this really interesting thing that happened. We had a little bit of downtime and this kid that worked for the boat crew, probably in his early twenties, about six foot two, six foot three, 240. And he looked like a, a movie star. He was just, he, he liked to, you know, work with no shirt on, not an ounce of fat on him and big arms, big chest, big back. And he would would he would do these contests where he would skin like these three hundred pound halibut in like twenty seconds. He'd go, all right, ready, and they would time him, and he would juke 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 juke. So he, this guy was badass. He's taking you know oil drums, and he couldn't carry one around. They weigh six hundred pounds, but he could flip one up without a lot of effort. I mean, this guy was a, bo- a beast. And what happened is, you know, as with a bunch of young guys, the arm wrestling tournament began. But because there were older guys mixed in, the arm wrestling tournament for money began. And so I remember this kid, Jim, he took the biggest, strongest, best arm wrestler and no, nobody's a professional and they're locked up. It's just like a Hollywood movie. They start going and the kid looks at him and goes, are you going to start? And then he just slam him. And the guy would be like crying with holding, you know, holding his arm. That's how hard he slam him. Finally, my buddy, Bill, He's just sitting there smoking. And like the second, like this had kind of died down. They did it for a day. And they, the next day, he, the kid had beaten one or two guys and nobody wanted to arm wrestle him. And it was like 50 bucks to arm wrestle him, whatever it was. And he takes his cigarette. I'll never forget this. He goes, ah, I'm gonna go take his money. And he just threw his, his cigarette down and he walks over and says, let's go. And the guy laughed at him and they put the money down. They lock up and this kid towers over him. And they go going like this. And Bill just looks him in the eye and he goes, are you going to start? He slammed him as harder, harder than that kid had been slamming everybody. The kid wasn't able to even use his, his knife hand the rest of the day. He was walking around holding his arm. So Bill comes back with his wad of money. And he goes back to smoking and being lazy and like a little sloth, like a little panda bear. And I said, are you a, a pro arm wrestler? He goes, no. He goes, I've arm wrestled like 50 times in my life. I've never lost. And I said, are you sandbagging? Like when you're carrying stuff, are you just, I said, I've known people that are a lot stronger than they look. He goes, no, no. He goes, those bags are heavy. I said, what's your secret? And he said, I learned when I was really young, I was talking to this old guy who was sort of into mysticism. And he said to me, just imagine if you don't want to be moved, imagine that there is a, a, a like a, like a bar, like an ener- a bar of energy going like stronger than steel going through the earth. He goes, imagine the earth is transfixed by this, you know, Archimedean bar. He goes, and it goes through whatever part of your body you don't want moved. He goes, so I imagine I don't want my arm moved. He goes, no one can move my arm because you, he goes, I don't, he goes, I don't think you could like push it over with a car. He goes, I, I literally, I think my arm might break. He goes, I've never lost. He goes, it doesn't work for anything else. He goes, but I cannot be picked up and I cannot have my arm bent if I don't want it to be. And after watching that, I believe him. So I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave this segment with that little story. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. Additionally, if you have any feedback, please put something in the comments below. And lastly, if you wanna watch the full episode of this clip, you can find it above. Thanks again for watching.